Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck, this one Blue White Flyers as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, and of course Skycat Sovereign, an amazing new addition from Ikoria, as a 2 mana 1-1 one, one elemental cat with flying that gets plus 1 plus 1 for each other creature we control with flying, and for 2 a blue and a white we get to create a 1-1 one, one white cat bird creature token with flying with this very cute picture. And the deck already wanted to play a lot of cheap flyers and kind of go wide, so the Skycat Sovereign turns into this other payoff card for playing all these cheap flyers. And then the other payoffs in the deck include Empyrean Eagle as a 3 mana 2 3 bird spirit with flying, giving other creatures we control with flying plus 1 plus 1. And then Sephara Sky's Blade, which normally costs 7 mana, but we can also pay a single white mana and tap 4 untapped creatures we control with flying rather than pay this spell's cost. And then we get a 7 7 Flying Life Link that gives other creatures we control with flying indestructible. So another amazing payoff for quickly deploying a lot of cheap flyers. And then the last payoff is a Rally of Wings as a 2 mana instant that untaps all our creatures, and creature we control with flying get plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn, so this can be a great finisher. And then looking at the actual flyers in the deck, we did decide to include Hushbringer, which is pretty well positioned right now, so you won't see any flyers with Enter the Battlefield abilities, like the Fairy Miscreant, or maybe the Hanged Executioner, which otherwise would be fine additions, but of course Hushbringer is very valuable too nowadays. And then at 1 mana we've got Fairy Guide Mother as a 1 mana 1-1 one, one flyer that we can also adventure to maybe give a creature plus 2 plus 1 until end of turn. We've got the Healer's Hawk as a 1 mana 1-1 one, one flyer with a lifelink. Loyal Pegasus as a 1 mana 2-1 one flyer that can't attack or block alone. And Spectral Sailor as a 1 mana 1-1 one, one flyer with flash. And for 4 mana we get to draw a card. So between the Sailor and the Skycat Sovereign we've got some nice mana sync abilities in the late game. So even if we're flooding out a bit it's not the end of the world. And then uh, I think we've covered every other card except for Winged Words, a 3 mana sorcery that costs 1 generic mana less to cast if we control a creature with flying, and draws 2 cards, so with a flyer a 2 mana draw 2, so that's another nice way to refuel our hand. And then the mana base is skewed towards white, since we've got mostly white cards, and that's also one of the benefits of not playing the Fairy Miscreant, is that the mana base is a little bit better since we won't have those awkward openers where we can deploy all our 1 drops in time. And we've got uh, 10 planes, 8 islands, and 4 held fountain. No tap lands, since we really want to be curving out in a deck like this. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable opening hand. Never really want to play the Loyal Pegasus on turn 1. Um, do still want to play a white 1-drop here, so that I can go double 1-drop next turn. So we'll go with the Guide Mother. And then turn 2, play 2 1 drops. Turn 3, we can refuel with the Winged Words, maybe go looking for one of our payoffs now that we have all these cheap flyers in play. Facing a Sultai deck. Ooh, Rally of Wings, that's not a bad payoff. So we'll attack and then. Probably just gonna Pegasus and Winged Words, and then next turn we can maybe Rally of Wings for the win. Ah, never mind, points got a Heartless Act, so it's gonna slow us down quite a bit. I don't think there's another 1-drop I would play here, but we'll do it like this. And then if we're flooding out, we can just use our Spectral Sailor a bunch. Uro is one of those cards that uh, can punish our inclusion of Hushbringer in the deck. Although I've had the games where the fact that Hushbringer stopped the life gain from Uro was enough to win the game. So we can double Rally of Wings, which puts the opponents exactly dead here. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Lurus deck. Could be a cycling deck. Um, yeah, I mean, this sounds fine. Don't know how good Hushbringer's gonna be, but if they're on a Cat Oven deck, then of 
course, Smashbringer is pretty useful too. Interesting, Pious Wayfarer, so this is uh, an aura heavy deck, probably featuring dead weights and Mars Grasps, which we don't really want to face as a small creature deck. But uh, I guess we can go end of turn Spectral Sailor into Hushbringer. Starfield Mystic. Sentinel's Eyes. If it's just a pure race, we might have a chance, but if they start playing removal spells that they can get back from the graveyard with Lurus, it's gonna be tough. Hushbringer stops the Constellation trigger since I'll say it's a creature entering the battlefield. Take five. And an Eidolon of Obstruction, which also gets the uh, Constellation trigger prevented. Alright, let's just play Empyrean Eagle. If they have no interaction, then technically uh, the second Eagle could win the game. Opponent down to one actual card in hand. And the Sentinel's Eyes. Alright, so they can pump the Alsade, so it gets to gain 3 here. So they're not necessarily dead to the other Eagle. Are they dead to Rally of Wings? They're gonna be at 12. So... Why would I not block the Pious Wayfarer? So this Rally of Wings should be game. Alright, sweet. Pona did not have the dead weights or Myers Grasps, and our uh, Flyers got the job done. On to the next one. We're on the play with a pretty nice hand. We've got plenty of payoffs. A good curve, especially if we pick up another cheap flyer to go with Sephara. Opponent on some sort of Jeskai deck. Well, we could see a Deafening Clarion next turn. And I'm one cheap flyer short of going Pegasus into Sephara to protect the team. So, just hope they don't have it, I guess. Can I beat a Clarion if I do nothing this turn? Just attack for three? Probably not. But the next turn I'll be able to play Sephara in case it's uh, Shatter the Sky. Opponent passes. Alright, I'm intrigued. Maybe they're holding a counterspell. Doesn't seem like it. Yeah, let's play it safe and play a Sephara here. That way if they do have a Shatter next turn, we don't lose. Opponent had Shatter the Sky. Sephara still dies, but the team is saved and we draw a card. And this should be game. Let's 
sweet. All right, Sephara's ability coming in handy here. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing a Kahira deck. The sand seems okay. So, could be an Elementals deck. Going to need another land here. Alright, so we can go Sovereign plus Pegasus or play Eagle. Um, playing Eagle is probably better. Scorching Dragon Fire the Eagle. Fair enough. And a Fires of Invention. So this is the Gruel Fires deck, which I've definitely heard of. Tempted to just replay Imperial Eagle here. Going Skycat plus Pegasus is also decent, because then next turn we get the Eagle effect, or I could play Sephara. Can't quite play Sephara this turn. All right, let's uh, switch it up a little bit. So they get to play two 5-drops, Crasher, not bad, and a Ceratops, very relevant here with uh, Reach. But they might be going for Haste and Trample instead. And of course still has Vigilance thanks to Kahira, so they get to block with it as well and make a giant uh, Trampling Dino. Pretty good turn for opponents. They added uh, 20 power to the board. But they're at 11, they only have one blocker. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So they should be dead to the eagle, even if they block one of the sovereigns. Take 12. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing an Umori deck, so all creatures most likely. Yeah, this seems fine. And then... I think I'm gonna go with the Guide Mother, since we have way more white one-drops we could draw. And that way, next turn, I get to be more mana efficient. Could have also shocked with the Fountain. But maybe I get to save myself some damage. All right. We guessed wrong here. Going Sailor first would have let us double spell. I guess playing Fountain would have uh, let me double Sailor. Well, let's see if they have some flying creatures. Because they're probably not going to have any removal. Symbiotes. Into Greathorn. Could have a Hydroid Crisis next turn to try and block. Or maybe Iluna, the big... Flying uh, Legend. This turn, probably just play more Eagles. And even if they have Iluna at this point, they're dead. If I 
sequence correctly with the turn one hallowed fountain, they also would have been dead this turn with the second eagle since we basically missed out on four damage. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play facing a Giruda deck. So we kind of want to find our Hushbringer or just have a very fast start. This hand could have a reasonably fast start with a turn 3 Eagle, but Sephara is not really helping us, especially in multiples. Is this any better? Yeah, I guess this could kill them before they kill me with Gerudas. Gonna need to find a third land. Ideally, find a white one drop next turn, and then a land. The Giruda deck doesn't play many flyers, typically, so... They wouldn't have an easy time uh, blocking our flyers. So they have to try and race us instead. So next turn I could put them to one. And they probably can come back from that. And the arrow opponent explodes, even if they play a turn for Giruda, they're gonna be dead before they can uh, do anything with it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Um, hands okay, we don't have a one drop, so it's not perfect, but I'll keep. Always a chance we draw into one drop, given that we're on the draw. Opponent's got a turn one healer's hawk, could be a mirror match. Yeah, blue whites. They do decide to play the Temple of Enlightenment. I'm not a fan, given that we usually have to curve out. So playing Hushbringer maybe stops a hawk if they don't have their own eagle. Uh, what's better here? Yeah, I guess I'll make them have it. Alright, they have their own eagle. So they do get to attack. Could have also stopped the Hanged Executioner from making a token. This turn, play Eagle. And I'll stay back, even though I could have attacked to guarantee the life gain. Opponent attacks, so they likely have their own Rally of Wings. So if I double block the Hawk, they would Kill Eagle, Hushbringer survives. Is that a trade I'm willing to make? Not really. Our opponent also on Hushbringer. Alright. So we agree. Think I'm just gonna keep up my own rally to use defensively. And if the game stalls out, we have Sovereign to make tokens, our opponent doesn't. So our opponent, of course, knows about the rally, so they're gonna play conservatively. Play Hushbringer, and then... They can't really attack me because I have the Sovereign that can block. But they might be drawing towards their Sephara or their own uh, Sovereign. Maybe they have double rally, could be. So if I block like this... Then... Double rally, I guess, still kills me. So I have to make some blocks. If they double rally now, what happens? I would take a total of 12 damage. I would gain 8. And then these would be 6-6s, six so I lose my Hushbringers. This is a 7-7. Seven, seven. This turns into a 4-7, so the Eagle still dies. So I guess that's fine. Yeah, 
Ooh, wow, quench. That was unexpected. So I lose my sovereign, they lose their eagle, and the game goes on. Activate this now in case I draw one drop. Opponent is at 41. And they drew another eagle. This doesn't seem like a great attack. Eh, Sephara's good, Selva can play her this turn. Can just hard cast Sephara next turn though. Just the Hushbringers attacking. No attacks. Five, six, seven, eight. So I can just play Pegasus, play Sephara, but I don't have any amazing attacks, so opponent would gain a bunch of life. So am I better off just drawing with a Sailor and playing this for one, but then I'll lose a bunch of blockers? If they have another Quench, I guess I want to play this for one mana. Let's see what happens. Yep. So we're back on the Spectral Sailor game plan. Opponent could also be playing Brazen Borrower, in which case convoking the Sephara and having them bounce it would have been bad, so without knowing the opponent's exact list it's kind of tricky. Now I could shock to still play Sailor, probably just play the Stapped and then I can decide whether I want to flash this in or draw a card. The fact that we have Sailor advantage is definitely a big deal here. Prioritize drawing cards to find one of our payoffs. And if our opponent draws quenches now, they're pretty dead. Alright, so another eagle is pretty good here. Although I probably have to wait for a Sephara before I can make any attacks on this board. I guess I'll draw now. Probably should have drawn first in case I drew into a rally. Alright, opponent's got the Sovereign now. So they've got a place to spend their mana. They get to make a 2-2 every turn. Alright, Rally of Wings is a big deal. Could attack with everyone except the Imperian Eagles and then try and use Rally, but our opponent is at 45, so they've got some life to spare and then they would be able to make some profitable blocks. So I think we still chill. Keep drawing with Sailor, but we've got a rally just in case. Point stays back. And where's our Sephara? Uh, 
Let's play a couple one drops. Long term, the Sailor should beat the Sovereign since we're just going to draw more Sovereigns than the opponent. So there's our Sovereign. Still want to prioritize drawing into Sephara. There she is. And then... Play Sephara. Tapping the smaller creatures that don't matter. And now we get to swing with everyone. And Rally of Wings also untaps our creatures, so... We're not afraid of dying on the way back. Alright, center point explodes. So the longest game we've played so far was a mirror match. Every other game seemed to be ending on turn 4, turn 5. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with the uh, fine hands. Don't know if Hushbringer is going to be good, but we'll start with the Guide Mother. Next turn, probably Pegasus plus Sailor. Opponent with the turn one Alsaid. Don't really plan on ambushing the Alsaid with the Sailor here. And then we're just looking for a payoff card between Skycat Sovereign, Empyrean Eagle, Sephara, or a Rally of Wings. So, 16 cards we would be happy to draw. Serpent appears to be on a Enchantment Aura deck. Which could be tough, because we don't play much interaction ourselves. We're by a blessing, takes out Pegasus. If they attack now, I think I will uh, ambush. Uh, Skycat's good. Typically don't really want to trade off our creatures, but against the Aura deck it's a bit of an exception since they usually have a pretty low creature count. Shall I gift the Guide Mother? Opponent's desperate to draw another creature here. Use the ability. Get to see the awesome token. It's funny that the sound effect the cat bird makes is both a cat's noise and a bird noise at the same time. I feel like this would just make a cat noise, but maybe that's just me. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Could see an early Sephara. The fastest we can play Sephara is turn three, but it doesn't happen very often. Turn to Glowspur Shaman, ability prevented by the Hushbringer. I guess we'll play Eagle and then next turn if they don't kill anything I can go Sovereign into Sephara.
It's her opponent on some sort of graveyard deck. And yeah, Uro gets to stay in play because of the Hushbringer, so that's one of the drawbacks. But I think we'll manage. So I could hit them for 7 and then probably kill them next turn, or I can play Sephara and probably kill them next turn. Just in case they have a Ritual of Soot or some other Sweeper. This seems safer. And our opponent's dead, even with their turn 3 Uro in play. On to the next one. On the play against the Giruda deck, but we should easily be able to outrace it here with uh, a nice curve of 1-drop, 2-drop, 3-drop into Rally of Wings. So I don't even need Hushbringer to beat the Giruda decks, given that they have very few ways to interact with flying creatures. And they usually spend the first 3 or 4 turns ramping. I'll let them decide on the scry before we show them anything. It's usually a good habit. So next turn we'll be attacking for 6. And the turn after they should be dead. Alright, let's see what they have. I guess they could have a Shatter the Sky. That's definitely a card some Giruda decks have access to. But if they don't, they die to my Rally of Wings. Can also play the Sovereign first to pump the original one if we want to. Charming Prince can gain them some life. Up to 14. Double Rally. Should definitely do the job. Don't even think we needed the second one. Alright, sweet. Turn for win. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Lurus deck, probably a Cycling deck if I had to guess. Hands not amazing, but getting Sephara in play is definitely a way to beat them. And then the Winged Words can probably draw into more cheap flyers to help me with uh, getting Sephara in play. I'll shock myself with the Fountain in case we draw more cheap one drops in white. So I could Hushbringer, I could Winged Words. I guess for now we'll Hushbringer still. And then next turn I can Winged Words, see if we draw one drop. Turn to Draneth Healer. So there's a good chance we'll be able to play Sephara next turn. And a cycling deck doesn't deal with uh, Giants 7 7 Flying Lifelink in the early game because they'll need their Zenith Flare, which isn't powered up yet. Alright, don't get to play Safari yet, sadly, but next turn we will be able to. For now, do I want to rally? It's a pretty weak rally, I don't think so. I guess I'll keep up the option to cast it in case I try and remove some of my creatures, but... The cycling deck typically doesn't have much removal. 
can also maybe use the rally to ambush their two two drops here. I've had a pretty interesting game against uh, Just Guy Cycling deck where they drew into multiple copies of Improbable Alliance, allowing them to keep making flying chum blockers. So that game lasted for a while, but they were kind of on the back foot the entire time. And eventually the Skycat Sovereign and Sephara were able to kill them. Double Rally, are they just dead? That's plus 12. 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah, I guess they're just dead. Ah, that's a shame. Kind of wanted to get Sephara in play, but... Alright, so... Probably featured a record number of games in today's gameplay video because all the games were over so quickly, so this blue-white flyers deck is a real deal. We didn't face a ton of deafening clarions, those are definitely the weakness of the deck, so probably the most popular deck in standard right now being the Jeskai Fires deck, I don't think is a good matchup for us. The mix of uh, Bonecrusher Giants as cheap removal and deafening clarion as a 3-mana sweeper is pretty hard to deal with. Once we get to more expensive sweepers, we can sometimes rely on Sephara to still get there. But uh, yeah, not many flyers being played right now, so we can often just outrace other aggressive decks. We've got uh, some nice anthems and some life gain built into the deck as well. And then the uh, Skycat Sovereign, a great new addition as well. So yeah, overall, I would definitely recommend giving this deck a try. Only plays the one new Ikoria card, so you probably already have some of the flying creatures. So that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.